sound better. better. I forgot to press the record button. So I am going to quickly start again with the three major roadblocks to balancing hormones that doctors are not trained to detect. The reason they're not trained to detect these things is because medical doctors are trained in basically saving your life. They're trained in life-saving medicine. And most of the people seeing medical doctors, actually about 80%, actually have non-life-threatening conditions. Okay. And we are finding sound difficult today. Speaker. Okay. Doom. How is sound now? Is that any better? I'm going to. Which, uh, is that better, June? Yes, at the moment. So if it's better now, I'm just going to tweak it again. I have had problems with this platform. Yeah, okay. It was my fault. I chose the wrong speaker or the wrong microphone. So here we go again. Major roadblocks. Okay. And so, yeah, about 80% in one survey of DPs, they reckon that 80% of the people coming to them actually were hypochondriacs. And that's because, again, medical doctors haven't ever had the time to learn non life threatening medicine. So it's not their fault and it's not what they're trained to do. Now, today you are going to learn why your doctor is an expert in symptom relief rather than a hormone specialist. This will become clear as we go through. You understand the two master hormones to get the others in order, why even the air you breathe needs to be considered, when to never eat if you want happier hormones, and a bonus miracle hormone cure for 30% of the population. So who am I? I'm Chris Picker, uh, and I have been showing people how to add 20 years of health to their life for 24 years now. I have worked with all kinds of people from all kinds of um, walks of life, all kinds of health problems, and I have learned so much from my patients, especially when I have a patient with a problem uh, that responds in a way that I didn't expect or I have a patient that didn't respond in a way that I expected. And so I seek to learn more. And so this has led me to some learning from more and more experts, especially um, when it comes to anti-aging medicine and um, the four doctors that I've learned from for hormone health, especially female hormone health. So my mission is to relieve human suffering, okay? And hopefully save the NHS uh, along the way. Why do I say that? Because most people who use the NHS are actually dying or have a condition that is lifestyle related, which means if they made better choices earlier, or even if they just make better choices now, they will actually cost the NHS nothing. And so somewhere up to 90% of the NHS's costs could actually be reduced if everybody took responsibility for their own health and took better choices. So I don't just want to help individuals, I want to help individuals inspire others. And as people become more inspired to look after their health, then their brains are going to work a little bit better. And maybe we're going to spread a little bit of peace around the world as well. So my mission isn't just about receive, relieving human health suffering, it's about relieving human suffering altogether. And my vehicle doing this is through mainly functional medicine. And um, now traditional medicine is based on you have someone over here who's very, very sick. And normal medicine like paracetamol, antibiotics, uh, metformin, it can help return people towards normal. But things like blood pressure medication, that doesn't return people to normal because blood pressure medication has side effects. It shortens other parts of your life, has other side effects. Um, 
blood sugar medication, that tends to have side effects as well in other areas. But I said, it never brings you back to normal health. If you're still having to take medicine, you have not got normal health. Whereas functional medicine is basically designed to basically improve, this is not just through normal, but through good health and actually into high level wellness. And functional medicine is something that you can give to someone who's got good health and can make them better. It's something you can give to an athlete and make them run faster. And that's one of my one of my mentors, which I'll introduce to you in a moment. Um, he actually is a functional medicine doctor to a lot of the US Olympic team, a lot of US stars. Someone asks, how can I lower my cholesterol? That is a webinar all by itself, and it is something I actually do teach my patients. Um, so if you uh, are, do really want to know how to lower cholesterol, contact me. We will get on to it. And one of my mentors is Dr. Bob Rakowski. And Dr. Bob Rakowski, he, he has worked with high-level athletes. He generally works with also people who are really, really sick, who've been sent to him to die because medicine is given up. And there are many people alive today because of the protocols he has taken people through, some of them of which I well, actually, one of them, I actually recommend all of my patients do, which I will reveal to you at the end. Another of my mentors, Dr. Dan Pomper, has got a great YouTube channel, Cellular Healing TV. Go and learn lots from that. But then, particular female hormone specialist, Dr. Anna Kabeka, um, and so Dr. Sarah Gottfried as well. Um, both written amazing books full of fantastic information uh, for everyone on the webinar. I'm going to actually email you out some information to a lot of other hormone experts. And in fact, to a, a special um, perimenopause summit for those of you with um, perimenopausal issues. Now, common problems that people suffer from that can actually all be related to hormone problems, such as fatigue, insomnia, digestive issues, weight gain, mood disorders, low sex drive, gaining belly fat, food cravings, okay? All of these, okay, are problems that people tend to just put up with to a, to a certain extent. They tend to put up with being fatigued. They just go, oh, I'm getting old, I'm fatigued, and they just put up with it. Insomnia, they put up with it. Digestive issues, they put up with it. Weight gain, they just, don't, they just put up with it. So many problems. If you just put up with them, this is that what then leads to more serious menstrual problems, perimenopausal problems, endometriosis, polycystic ovary syndrome, which some people are born with, some people develop, infertility, but then serious, more seriously at the other end of life, diabetes, cancer, heart disease. So if you have any things that you're just not quite feeling right, it's really good to try and find what is going on. Now, I'm just going to give a really quick overview of hormones because really I could spend an entire evening just talking about lots of different hormones, but there are three basic different types. There are the steroid hormones, which are made from cholesterol. And one of the reasons uh, that Christine, that people have, Christina, sorry, that people have raised cholesterol is because their body is raising the cholesterol deliberately to try and make some steroid hormones because it believes it needs to make more. And so very often just by trying to lower cholesterol, um, you could actually be doing the wrong thing. You actually need to find out why your cholesterol is high in the first place. And then there are non-steroid hormones made from proteins amino acids and then you have prostaglandins and um, which are again a different kind of hormone so and all these different hormones they're made from different things and so this is the first part of the blocks of hormone health so the building blocks or wrecking balls of hormone health basically the first one is the raw material that you actually have if you do not actually ingest all the right things to make hormones, you are going to have some kind of hormone issue, whether it's estrogen, progesterone, whether it's testosterone, I know not for ladies, although actually no, ladies can have testosterone problems, I'm sorry, because you do actually make some. Um, 
and or it could be cortisol, insulin, thyroid hormone, luteinizing hormone, leptin. Uh, there's so many hormones. So if you don't have the right things going in, you cannot make the hormones. But also, when you eat and how you eat also have an effect on hormones. Now, when it comes to raw materials, there are two things. First of all, you need to actually have everything in place to make the hormones, but you also need everything in place to actually make your cells, the individual units and parts of the body, because your cells are made up of, like, see all this stuff here, the yellow bit with the green tails? That's all cholesterol. All of your cell membranes are made from lots and lots and lots of cholesterol, and then embedded in it, you have different proteins, glycoproteins, you have little channels that come through and what hormones do is they literally open up channels to allow things in or out sometimes and raw materials you need to make lots of other little chemicals inside the cell so this little bit here for instance this was part of the cell membrane and inside the cell you have lots of other things you have lots of other chemicals and little messengers in there and you need all these chemicals you need to get all of these things made from the raw materials that you're eating and one of the big problems is that today people actually have got too much fat and it's not just from actually it's not actually from eating too much fat there are lots of reasons why people have too much fat and actually eating too much fat is actually not one of the reasons. But the problem once you actually get too much is it turns men into women and women into men. Fat is not good. It actually stops you being who you really are. And so the first master hormone that we need to look at is insulin. Now, insulin people think of as it's the one to do with blood sugar and diabetes. Um, and it's basically our primary storing hormone. It tells our body whether we should be storing energy or burning it. And insulin is directly related to your lifespan. Basically, um, the lower your insulin levels, the longer your life. So it's really good to do things like limit your blood sugar or be so that you don't have to have so much insulin. Um, insulin also regulates your blood fats and um, it, it helps get excess nutrients from your blood and converting it into other things to fat basically. So insulin is really the thing that converts sugar to fat. So most people, you know, insulin doesn't really turn fat into fat because it's already fat. And a lot of people have problems because they've got too much insulin turning sugar into fat. But also, insulin can help build muscle. It can help store protein. It can help keep magnesium in your body, which is very, very important. It's got many, many effects, including it regulates the sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So if you have a problem with estrogen, progesterone, or testosterone, you need to have a look at insulin. So you need to have a look at what you're eating. It's absolutely critical. So the solution is going through what's called an insulin reset, where you eat in a certain way, you use something called intermittent fasting or the ketogenic diet, and you mix it, and also lots of fiber as well, and you mix it with the right kind of exercise. High intensity training is usually very good. Every individual is a little bit of different. Um, but these are the main ways to try and get insulin under control. And one of the keys is as intermittent fasting, which is all about just trying to restrict the hours in the day in which you eat. And one of the critical things, okay, critical things to do are things like stop eating three hours before you go to bed. Try and then have at least 13 hours from your dinner before your breakfast. Try and if you have kidney problems, have more frequent smaller meals. If you don't have any kidney problems, then try and have three meals or two meals. But critically, if you do have hormone issues, do not eat anything at all before eight o'clock in the morning. Um, because there's another hormone that is meant to be at its highest at eight o'clock in the morning. And when you eat, it can be disrupted because when you eat, it can actually cause problems. It can spike your insulin, which then disrupts this other hormone. 
So if you do have major hormone issues, do not eat anything before eight o'clock in the morning. So what should, you eat? what should you eat? You should eat real food, not too much, mostly plants. It's that simple. If you need more guidance, then I am here to help. Now, the other hormone, slot number two, is related to stress, which we'll get to in a moment. Now, most people think of stress as sort of mental, emotional stress that comes from, you know, work, life, etc., etc., etc. But what they don't think about are the deeper ways that stress affects your body. Now, as your body gets stressed, as your nervous system gets stressed, this actually has an effect on your immune system, but it also has an effect on your endocrine system. It actually affects your thyroid, your adrenal, um, your ovaries, the gonads, and all of these things are all interconnecting in different ways. And stress unbalances everything. And stress is directly related to unbalancing the female hormones. Okay. And prolonged stress uh, leads you to become insulin resistant. So as you become insulin resistant, you're pumping out more insulin, you're making more fat. Um, decreases your recovery to illness, it, has, it affects libido and reproductive function. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. We now know that stress is basically linked to just pretty much every cause of death on the planet. Um, in fact, I'm going to read this one out. Medical experts have been documenting for almost 100 years that chronic activation of the sympathetic nervous system, which is the stress nervous system, is the cause of all disease, physically and mentally, or at least a cause, that should say. Uh, Constant chronic loneliness keep us trapped in survival and functionally disconnected from healing. When we are in survival, our ability to heal, grow, learn, love, and flourish are greatly reduced. And that is key. When you're stressed, you cannot heal. You cannot function properly. Um, Stress affects the brain, and the main effects are because of something called cortisol, which is your stress hormone. When you are under stress, your body pumps out cortisol, and cortisol has an effect on your body, basically, to get blood sugar up so that you've got blood sugar to create energy, which then, of course, spikes insulin up. But it has all kinds of other effects. When you have too much cortisol, it ends up affecting your memory. It inflames the brain as well. It also starts causing effects with serotonin, which is one of the feel-good hormones. And cortisol is one of the things that's meant to be spiked at 8 o'clock in the morning. And when you eat um, and you have insulin, something that spikes insulin, it starts messing with your cortisol as well. So master hormone number two is cortisol. Okay. Now, excess cortisol it contributes to, again, all health problems, weight gain, osteoporosis, digestive problems, hormone imbalances, cancer, heart disease, diabetes. Uh, it affects the brain as well, and it also helps control your sleep-wake cycle. So it's very important. So I hope you can see from just looking at insulin and cortisol how it can be causing all of the problems that are often put down to estrogen. And one of the reasons why contraceptive pills work so well um, and why hormone replacement therapy works so well is estrogen is basically like a major suppressant in that it basically stops you feeling the symptoms. It never actually fixes the problem because if you've got a problem with cortisol or insulin, estrogen can come along and mask the problem like a painkiller so you think you're fixed. But then when you come off the, the estrogen, the hormone replacement therapy or the birth control pill if you're earlier on in life, um, you feel worse and you think it's because you need the hormones. It's not. It's because you've got another problem. Not all the time, but uh, most of the time, it's something to do with insulin and cortisol somewhere. So symptoms of too much cortisol include weight gain, particularly around the abdomen and face. Um, you may see people who've ever taken steroids, fat faces. Um, then you have thin and fragile skin, slow to heal. Acne can often be a cortisol stress problem. Um, facial hair and irregular menstrual periods for you. Symptoms of not enough cortisol, so this comes from many, many years of chronic stress, could be 
continued tiredness, nausea and vomiting. If you're actually getting nausea and vomiting from a lack of cortisol, you need to see a medical doctor. Um, weight loss, muscle weakness, pain in the abdomen. Again, something you need to get referred to your doctor for because you may actually need some injections and some steroids. Uh, but generally the answer is a cortisol reset. De stress. Now there are supplements you can take for de stressing and combating cortisol. We've got an amazing one here called Cortisol Pro. Breathing exercises, caffeine avoidance, low sugar, the right kind of exercises. One of the things that I teach my clients through my anti aging program are the, the magnificent seven stress busters. So again, if you are having problems with stress, reach out, contact me. I will help. Now, block number three, which again, medical doctors just aren't trained to look at. And it's a big, big shame because it's a huge problem of toxins. Okay. Now, and toxins come in many, many, many shapes and forms. Um, you may be aware, I mean, thanks to last year, a young girl in London dying from air pollution, but 9,000 people a year in London die prematurely because of air pollution. And in the UK, it's actually between 40 and 220,000 people are dying from air pollution. And some of these pollutants actually are endocrine hormone disruptors. Now, it's not just in the air, it's in the water, it's on the food. There are lots of endocrine disruptors. It's a well-known and well-researched area. And this comes from the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, which is a U.S. government-run um, website um, and U.S. government-run um, center. And this is straight from their site. Endocrine disruptors are chemicals that can interfere with endocrine or hormone systems at certain doses, usually very small. These disruptions can cause cancerous tumors, birth defects, and other developmental disorders. Any system in the body controlled by hormones can be derailed by hormone disruptors. And there are all kinds of them. And these are just some of the things on the NIHF's website today. Um, there is linking early environmental exposures to adult diseases. So basically, exposure to chemicals early on, leads to disease later on. Earlier puberty is linked with personal care products. So there are about 400 chemicals in your bathroom at the moment, and they are being linked to early puberty. Okay. And then breast cancer linked to environmental, highlighted at the symposium. And then there's uh, yeah, preterm birth links. There's persistent pollutants also linked to poor vaccine response as well, which is very interesting. And then there are specific uh, hormone disruptors that disrupt insulin. There are specific ones that disrupt estrogen. If you watched the pre-video to this, if you, um, and then you would have watched the Toxic Baby um, video, which talks about glyphosate. And that's the Toxic Baby Tyrone Hayes TED Talk. And so you will know that the question is no longer if we are toxic. The real question is how toxic are we? And some of the symptoms of toxicity are sleep difficulties, chronic fatigue, anxiety, memory, brain fog, high blood pressure, weakened immunity, digestive issues, mood swings, weight gain, food cravings, cold extremities, hormonal issues, headaches, poor concentration, racing mind, accelerated aging. And a lot of people just put all of these sorts of things down to, I'm just getting older, I'm just not right. Whereas the real answer is, they're toxic, and the toxins are throwing out insulin and cortisol, they're making you stressed. So what's the answer? Dr. Bob Rakowski's seven-day reboot is one of the answers. You also have to do things like install air filters, you have to look at the food you're eating, you have to look at the water you're drinking, you have to look at minimizing the toxins coming into your life, but you also have to look at removing and lowering the toxins in your body. And that's what Dr. Bob Bukowski's seven day reboot is really good at doing. I recommend people do this um, seven days, then they follow a great healthy diet and regime for 30 days, and then they repeat this seven day re reboot every month until they've got the results, they want, until their body's cleaned out. I do this twice a year. Now, 
which brings me on to block number four, which is your body, spine, and nerves. Do not underestimate the benefits of a healthy spine. Your brain connects to your body through it. Now, this is actually how I really got into hormone health many years ago. And if you have seen some of the videos that I've placed in the last few months, you'll see that I've done a few on the power of chiropractic or spinal work on improving people's hormone health, especially females. And again, I first got into this when I was about four or five years into practice and I had a patient who came to me with back pain and we worked with her and it got to the point very quickly that the back pain was a lot better and then it came back and then it got a lot better and then it came back and we realized that it was basically just tied in with her cycle. Um, and so then we actually did some work, basically putting her through a detox, and that got rid of her menstrual pain. But at the same time, I had another patient who had come to me with her menstrual problems, and we actually worked on her spine and her menstrual pain. And so I, through this, I realized that, you know, people can have exactly the same symptoms, but they have completely different causes. But for it seems for about a third of people, if you look after their spine, their symptoms get better. For a third of people, if you look after the side and you get rid of the toxins, they get better and they eat properly. And for a third of people, if you look after their stress, they get better. Uh, but I'm going to come up with some statistics in a moment. So the spine is very, very important because it connects your brain to all of your own organs. I'm not going to bother you with that. And you may have heard me say before, 90% of the stimulation and nutrition to the brain is generated by movement of the spine. And this is from Roger Sperry, um, who won a Nobel Prize in 1981. And he said, basically, that the windmill generates electricity. For, but basically, the spine is like a windmill that generates electricity for the brain. Um, and I will skip that one. So I'm just going to go into a couple of little studies here. A 10 year retrospective study on the efficiency of manual physical therapy to treat female infertility. Now, they looked at all kinds of different infertility, they looked at a number of different things, but the overall upshot was they found out that um, 50, over 50% 50 of the time, 56.16% of the time, and they found that the reason of infertility was purely because of physical things that were wrong by like twisting the pelvis or the spine or they needed some work on the abdominal muscles there were things that could be done physically that actually increased fertilization and when you compare this to in vitro fertilization so basically if women can't conceive they go to and have IVF IVF is under 30 percent it has an under 30 percent success rate by itself Whereas physical means over 50%. And seeing as NHS, we're well, seeing as IVF costs £5,000 and a course of corrective care could cost us £500, um, it's probably worth actually trying corrective care first. And again, I've had a few patients over the years that came to me with back pain. They also said that they were trying to conceive but haven't been able to do this and they were thinking of IVF. They get rid of the back pain, boom, they can conceive. And there are children now in the village because the mother decided to get rid of their back pain by seeing a chiropractor rather than taking painkillers. And there are other studies um, on many other areas of female health saying that osteopathy helps with menstrual pain, osteopathy helps and chiropractor help with um, menopausal pains and aches. There are so many things, there's a whole, there's a whole range of things that were done with physiotherapists looking at endometriosis, pain from polycystic ovary syndrome, all kinds of hormone problems actually being treated physically by actually physically working on the organs. It's amazing and it's worth a try. So I know I'm with all of those, but that's because I just really wanted to give you an overview of what's possible and get you thinking and maybe looking at some different areas to get control over your life. Now, if you think you would like my help, I should just spell out sort of how I work. Um, I've built an online program that teaches what's called the Magnificent Seven, 
which isn't just about eating right and moving right and getting your spine corrected or de-stressing. It's about thinking right, talking right, eating right, drinking right, moving right, sleeping right, and pooping right, or detoxification. And the first part of the process I take people through is what I call the anti-aging health lab. I do with the seven week, which is the first seven weeks where I teach people how to ingest all the right raw materials um, which are compatible with health. And then we look at decreased stress and de decreasing stress hormones. Then we look at increasing energy and movement, increasing human growth hormone, which is something I haven't spoken about. But while you actually increase human growth hormone, you also improve detoxification. And then we look at something called xenohormesis and nutrient cycling, which is really, really excites me. Um, and then we experiment with fasting and then we do a detox in the seventh week. Now, it isn't just about doing these seven and that's it, seven weeks and it's over. It's actually a cycle. You always look at improving raw materials. You always look at decreasing stress. And it's a cycle. And as you go around, you just keep on reminding yourself. In fact, it's really good to actually do this seven weeks a number of times to ingrain it into your system to really learn it. But then beyond that, there's advanced training into e right thing quite the point. So you can actually take each level, each of these to a different and new level. Now, some results from the program. Um, again, I'm sorry I put this together in Russia. There's not much about hormones, although there is a little bit here. Um, Trina, I mean, she found that rheumatoid arthritis and her knees decreased, she's sleeping better, and at the bottom, you'll see her menopausal stuff has gone. No hot sweats, etc. And then, next page, friend of mine, Dr. K, uh, she's lost 15 kilograms um, in less than two months. And another friend went to the program and her hair started growing back, which surprised her. So again, hormones, and when you actually get everything working, the body starts rejuvenating. So what I would like to leave everyone with is I would like to leave everyone with a, a mission. Okay, a mission should you choose to accept is to build your life around your health rather than salvaging your life from illness. So try and build your health. And if you would like my help, email me, go to the website, learn more. And yeah, if you would like to know more about the Anti Aging Health Lab and the Magnificent Seven course, then reach out, contact me, we'll have a call, we'll find out if it's right for you. Okay, be well. Thank you very, very much. I will just have a check to see if there's any other questions. Um, while people have a think, if there's any questions, I will just have a drink. And however, if there are, this replay will be available later. I'll upload it to YouTube and I'll get the link out. I'll also be getting the link out to some cool stuff that's coming up about hormone health and yeah that is it for now thank you very much for watching you are all truly magnificent